Welcome to uh, Black Men Speak. I'm your co-host, uh, Jimmy Stewart, and this is the other co-host. Tommy Duncan. And today we're going to uh, talk about summer activities for kids. What to do with the kids this summer. So, so Tom, as we were mentioning earlier, we were just having an off-camera discussion. What is wrong with Hollywood that we have no big blockbuster movies this summer for the kids to go to? You know, it was, it was interesting. I was kind of thinking that same thing. Obviously, we've had a couple of uh, big blockbuster films, you know, earlier in the spring. Obviously, the Marvel, uh, you have the Black Panther, obviously, you have the Avengers. And, uh, you know, I hadn't really seen anything really big coming out for the summer. Yet, obviously, this may, maybe they're holding off here, but typically they would start uh, advertising in the late spring. Yes, um, uh, May would be the perfect month to start setting up your big blockbuster movies for the summer. And I just don't know if anything is coming out this summer. I haven't heard of anything, um, and so I guess we'll see. But so Solo, I think, is probably the only one that's probably getting the most fanfare right now. Right now, right. Uh, but this that that came out in uh, in May, the early part of May. So um, it's going to start dying out here in another week or two. It'll probably be on DVD uh, by the end of June, and then what? So I think Hell Hollywood sort of let us down on this when I'm without planning their, their movie productions are just right. So without the movies, let's talk about some other things that the young people can get into. Um, one of my thoughts was the uh, possibility of doing some volunteer work, finding an organization that needs some help. Um, maybe it would be good um, to be able to put that on a college application that you've also volunteered at the homeless shelter or the soup kitchen or um, a, a, a blood bank or someplace, um, or you know, or do do zoos and things like that allow volunteers? Um, um, well, that's a good question. <laughs> I guess we've seen probably the last five years some you know folks are getting uh, you know snatched up by uh, gorillas and <laughs> eaten up by alligators. So you got to be kind of careful. With I that. guess you have to be careful, uh, <laughs> especially if you fall into one of the kids. Exactly. You know, parents, 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 yeah. parents not watching their kids and they're getting <laughs> there with the uh, the gorilla and get snatched up by a gorilla or getting uh, turned over by a dog on alligator at the beach. And, and unfortunately, I think uh, one of those stories where the, the little girl fell into the cage, which I'm not sure how she fell into the cage with the gorilla, but I think they ended up putting the gorilla down. Yeah, um, and it wasn't so, the gorilla's fault. No, no, it's my thing. You know, the gorilla just sitting there, you know, and, and all of a sudden, you know, this, this, this I guess, what, what potentially could have been a meal, falls into your lap. Uh, I'm not sure if the gorilla's gonna harm the poor child or not, but. Um, but yeah, the gorilla had to be put down. I'm surprised they just couldn't tranquilize the gorilla, man. Um, right. Should have darted something to it and uh, put it to sleep uh, while you go in there and get the baby out. But I guess if anything had happened in a tranquilized state, if he had hurt the child, the zoo would have been liable. Yeah, and it's interesting. I was actually uh, driving uh, the other day and uh, I saw a, uh, the Fort Worth Zoo, mm -hmm. which is probably one of the most nationally renowned zoos, um, at least, you know, right here in Fort Worth. They have an African savannah. Really? At the uh, Fort Worth Zoo, so okay. that would probably be uh, something that would be a good look for kids of probably all ages, even adults. I haven't been to the Fort Worth Zoo, but how does that compare to the Dallas Zoo? Oh, the, the Fort Worth Zoo, I think, is uh, far superior really? as most of the other uh, the uh, the arts and museums are in Fort Worth. So I think <coughs> Fort Worth is probably one of the top five or so zoos in the country. Uh, mm -hmm. After, I think, uh, San Diego Zoo, there's the St. Louis I've been to, uh, to the uh, Balboa Zoo in uh, San Diego, uh, very nice. So I've, I've, been, I've been to the Dallas, I've been to Fort Worth Zoo, so. Yeah, yeah, the other thing that uh, when you start doing the kids, I uh, you know, went, went to the mall to uh, look for something a couple of days ago before I went out of town. And, you know, it was, I, I could tell it was the summer. Was it loaded with kids? It's hilarious, I was like, okay, I get it. You had every parent of their kids up there sucking up the air conditioning. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it, it got well, to it get hot here, I mean, come on, you can't blame folks for, for going free air on top of that? Yes. I don't, have to, I don't have to run my ear at home. Let's just go to the mall. There we go. So everybody ain't they kids up at the uh, mall sucking up their cold and going to the ice cream. Where I don't talk mall kids run around all over the place. Well, you know, you give them a cell phone, you give them a few dollars to run around and buy them some snacks. Um, you go do some window shopping or maybe go sneak in and watch a movie yourself and, um, and kill a few hours. So just tell them, hey, just don't leave the mall. Whatever you do, don't leave the mall. And, um, and then run around the other bad kids. So, so okay. So the mall is one activity where you can take your kids. Um, yeah, the mall. possibly get some get some exercise in by uh, walking around the mall. Um, but you have the uh, the aquarium. 
I mean, yes. In Dallas in particular, you have the uh, Dallas Aquarium downtown. And, you know, for what it's worth, you have uh, several museums, mm -hmm. uh, whether they be the, uh, the Dallas Museums or the uh, Fort Worth Museum. You have the, uh, the Kimball Art Museum. You have the Ross Perot Museum. And so you have a lot of uh, learning and cultural activities. I mean, <clears throat> I'll be frank with you, Jim, when you know, I was looking forward to summer so I could uh, go outside and play uh, football or basketball. Kids you know, play anymore. basketball. I mean, I, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, These days. It's a thumbs, Tom. Yeah. I mean, when we were kids, you're right. When when summer came, grab put some shorts on, grab a ball, go out to the park, be there all day playing basketball, sticking your head under somebody's faucet, um, to cool off and get some get a drink. You can be out in hundred degree heat all day long and then come in, and, um, you know, and, and but now you, know, you go to parks a day, middle of the day, vacant. Mm -hmm. There are no kids there running around playing. Um, all the kids are inside doing this with their thumbs, so or at the mall walking around as their activity. But yeah, that that whole being outside playing, yeah, that's a foreign thing now. So right, right. So you know, I guess there are you know there are a uh, you know multiplicity of uh, different things that you can do. But you know, uh, you're right. Most kids want to be in front of a screen nowadays as opposed to outside, which is you know kind of odd. Uh, growing up the way that uh, we did, but. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely uh, things are different. I, I remember growing up, we had some rules. One, you didn't want to be inside during the daytime because parents were punished. Like, you know, because if you're running out the door, what would you get? Um, you let down my cool air out. You either stay in or you stay out. And if you, next time you come back in, you stay in. So that was like, that was a kiss of death. You're like, okay, I can't go back in the house now, um, you know, until the lights go out. So the, the next rule was, <laughs> When the street lights came on, that was your signal to be inside. You know, you were not allowed to be outside when the lights came on. Um, so even if you didn't have a watch, you know, you say, well, I'm going to be inside at 9.15 or 9.30, none of that. When the light comes on that pole, you make sure you're inside. So that was your signal. Just they start flickering, you can always hear the and they start flickering a little bit before they actually power it on. But you, you knew that was your signal, I need to start heading home because and do kids ride bikes anymore? Because that, no. that was another thing we used to Yes, do. You know, get on your bike and ride around you and your buddies. Um, I don't think kids ride bikes. I see adults yeah. riding bikes. Matter of fact, I see more adult <laughs> men riding bikes in riding clubs than I do kids nowadays. So, it's so, the strangest thing. I don't know if kids actually, uh, I don't even know if they even sell kids kid bikes anymore, or even if they were selling them, because they just don't uh, do it. Uh, they just don't, uh, that, that activity is not uh, on the list anymore. So. Um, so what are some other things you think? Uh, you know, they, so, so uh, volunteer activities. Um, one of the things that so, I do, Jimmy, that, uh, and again, I usually see younger kids there, but I, I go to the library, you know, to uh, pick up books and to pick up videos sometimes. And so, you know, we used to have reading clubs, mm -hmm. you know, when we were younger, or, or picking up, you know, you know, you need to read a book, at least one book a week, or, you know, at a minimum one book a month. At least one a month. So yeah. you should have at least something on your reading list that you should be reading at least at least once a week or once a month. You should have your kids reading at least a couple of books during the summer. Yes, I read one book for pleasure each month and then one book for knowledge each month. So um, I try to do one book a week and it's very aggressive. I can do it, but find the time to do it. But two books a month is uh, within uh, the uh, something I can schedule and make happen. So you're right, at least one book a month at minimum for your children, so um, if you can get them reading two or three books a month, it's even better. Yeah. Then, of course, you have the local parks as well. Yes. Well, what about uh, more uh, productive things? How about uh, uh, summer jobs? Or you know, have all the uh, the uh, non-functional adults taking all the kid jobs, or are there still jobs that are available <laughs> for young people? That is a uh, good question now, man. I mean, when we were growing up, obviously, you know, throwing the newspaper, but that's really not around anymore. And, you know, it looks like, uh, you know, the, the yard mowing jobs, they, you know, another community just kind of got a lock on that one. So it's, it's, it's you know, mowing yards is, is a lot of competition out there. Yeah, even fast food when we were growing up used to be a teenager job, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old, um, or, you know, kids ever, you know, get ready to go off to college or something. But now, all the fast food restaurants have adults in them. You don't see kids in there anymore. Mm -hmm. So it looks like adults are taking a lot of the entry level jobs that are normally reserved for, for kids now. So, And on top of that, demanding a living wage to do the work. So, 
So yeah, I mean, those are those are probably the things that come top of mind in terms of uh, summer activities. Obviously, in addition to that, you know, family vacations and things of that nature. Uh, I remember, you know, some of the talking about movies, mm -hmm. the uh, the Griswolds. <laughs> the Griswolds <laughs> going out to a Wally World. There we go. Yeah, the family vacation. <laughs> you know, I don't know if they have. Uh, the uh, station wagons anymore. Man. They have uh, obviously, you know, it's SUVs. It's SUVs now, yes. But they get, get, get a crossover. Get, there you go, get in the station wagon and take your family <laughs> and drive across the country. It wasn't just a station wagon. It was one of those, uh, I think it was one of those woody station wagons, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. With the wood panels on it or something. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, you used to see they don't, they don't make cars like that anymore. So, um, and that may be a good thing. So, yeah, that old dread. And, and, and no kid. Want their parents to have a station. There was nothing cool about the station wagon. No, not for nothing. Not for, not for a kid. You know, you, you you don't want to be dropped off at school in the family station wagon. So it may have been a great vehicle to put a lot of people in, and still have some area in the back to put groceries and stuff. But it was not a cool vehicle to be dropped off in. So yeah, the last thing you want to be riding around in and saw your parents with was the station wagon. Um, in fact, the cool car when I was a kid was a Cadillac. Yeah. You know, you can get a or a Camaro. Well, come out. Well, that's that's way. That's very cool. Yes. Uh, I remember the big. It's like big cars, man. The big Grand Marquis, um, the uh, the Buick Electra, the the two twenty five uh, was very popular. Um, so all those big cars were were, were cool back then. Um, now everybody wants uh, a smaller car, more efficient. Um, the SUVs are very hot. So, but you know, but but yeah, but that's uh, but as it relates to the, the kids again. Um, and a lot of these kids now have, uh, in fact, one of the schools I was trying to think of was school, I think it was West Plano. I drove by West Plano one day, you know, during the school year. The student parking, I started to say student parking lot, full of cars. Hmm. In fact, the student parking lot had more cars than the teacher's parking lot, and the kids had better cars than what was in the, in the teacher's side, so. Wow. And, and, and I just remember I was, 24 years old before I had my first car. And these kids now are having cars in high school. Nice cars. Nice cars. Not even the, the, the POS cars, uh, mm -hmm. the, jun the clunkers and the junkers that, that, that are barely being held together with some duct tape. You just happen to have some wheels. No, these kids have nice cars. And like I said, better cars than some of the teachers had yeah. in their parking lot. So <clears> the <throat> things have totally changed. And then I'm not sure, uh, I, I remember eighth and ninth grade, I, I rode a bike to the school, you know, rather than catch the bus. Um, you know, I had a 10 speed man, I would you know, hop on in and I, I thought that was the coolest thing to be able to have my own transportation to, uh, to get to school. You know, and, and now I don't, even, I don't even think you even see a bike rack at these schools anymore. No. No. And I used to walk until I was in high school. It was, <laughs> it, was, it was too far to walk to high school. I went to Skyline, which was on the other side of town. I took the bus, but yeah, junior high, me and my uh, buddy, we used to walk to school every day. A couple of miles, got plenty of good exercise. <laughs> <laughs> plenty, plenty, plenty of miles in the day. We didn't, we didn't have to worry about uh, how much we, we burned it out between walking in and walking back. <laughs> so so you, you guys uh, doing no bus ride or y'all were too close for a bus ride? Yeah, we were too close. It was, it was maybe a, a couple of miles, but we walked. And, and you know, today, time they would not allow these kids to walk two or three miles to get to and from school. Mm -hmm. uh, I doubt that same route, wherever you lived at that time, uh, they, they would allow those kids to walk that far to school now. Yep. So they would say, oh, that's just you know, two miles, that's just too far. You know, they you know, they can't expect them. I think probably a half a mile would probably be what they would consider acceptable. Maybe a mile, two or three miles is what totally out of the course. And it's funny because we, we didn't even think about it. We just, you know, walked to school every day and walked back and never thought about the, uh, the length or anything like that. Uh, I remember <clears> my first uh, year in college, Talking about walking, I went to school at uh, University of New Orleans, and I was my cousin was supposed to have his own place near the campus, and so now by the time I got there, he had lost his job, lost his apartment. So long story short, the first semester I had to stay with my uncle and his wife until I could get into the dorm, and they lived in New Orleans East, and then uh, University of New Orleans out by the lakefront, but I had to walk many days uh, from New Orleans East across the um, navigational canal, uh, around the lake, to the campus. In time I had to be about five miles, man, up and, and you know, take out my classes, and then in two, three, two, three o'clock in the afternoon, walk my butt back um, to their house. 
and it would take me about an hour and 15 minutes, sometimes an hour and a half to um, each direction. And this is that New Orleans heat. Ooh. High humidity, 98 degrees out, uh, no shade uh, out there. Um, but but you did it though. So, but now I don't think uh, yeah, I don't think these kids have that kind of endurance um, to want to go well, back Jimmy, and forth. Jimmy, some of them. Uh, <coughs> I hate to say it, but some of them, I uh, got too much weight on them <laughs> to, to do this. Um, <laughs> yes, they, 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 they might faint right. trying to uh, walk around. <clears throat> You're right about that. Uh, we are we have become a healthy, healthy people. I'm not going to say healthy. I mean, I would say that the country, I mean, uh, close to two-thirds of the kids are overweight or obese now. Yeah, and I'm, 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 trying, I'm with them, so I'm trying to uh, get a few pounds off myself. Um, I'm still healthy enough to do it and young enough to do it. Um, but. There's just so much good food out there, though. Time is hard, man. Not to <laughs> fast food on every corner. You got to drink plenty of water. You got to drink plenty of exercise. water. Let no, me ask you this. I mean, one thing that I guess, especially to the parents uh, or guardians, that we can consider or maybe give our uh, top two or three things, uh, pieces of advice for folks who have kids that are going to high school, you know, going from junior high to high school, going from high school to college. And then maybe for those kids who are getting out of college, so maybe we can put it in three tiers. One, what is your advice for folks who have kids who are going to high school? What is your advice for uh, folks who have kids who are going to college? And, and then maybe an excerpt for folks who are just getting out of college. Well, let's say for for <clears throat> kids going to the high school before they before they become high school eligible, uh, while they're still in elementary school, make sure that you establish a foundation of uh, of authoritarian. Um, relationship with them. So you may have to do something that hasn't been done in a long time, which is get the leather belt out of the cloth and start swinging it from time to time to uh, enforce your rules. But that's important. And then set the bar very high for your kids. Don't be afraid that you're setting it too high and they're going to fail um, when they can't cross it. If you swing the belt enough time, trust me, they'll figure out a way to keep that belt from swinging. If that's truly the consequence for not following the rules or meeting their demands. So when they go to high school, the kids now really need a good foundation. The, the Asian community, this is nothing bad about them, bless their hearts. Um, um, they have a sense of discipline about education. They value it in such a way that they really push their kids really hard, more so than probably any other community in, in, in America. And it's interesting because, I don't know if you heard that, the, uh, there are several lawsuits against Harvard by Asian, by the Asian community, Asian groups, because Harvard has put in a affirmative action program to limit, <coughs> excuse me, to limit the number of Asian kids who are accepted. Because uh, <coughs> they say that they are striving for diversity, but there are so many Asian kids who qualify to get in <coughs> that they're making it difficult for the whites, the blacks, the, uh, the Indians, uh, and other groups to get in because this, this pool of applicants is just so great. So I would say that, you know, for, for parents, um, one, push your kids for, for academic excellence. That's okay. And then the other thing is that if there are Asian kids at your school and study groups, get your kids into those groups. Uh, those are the kids that you want your, your those are the, the students that you want your kid to be friends with. And the same thing when you go to college. Um, if you, most university campuses you may find, I mean, there are study groups all over the place. But trust me, uh, if you get into uh, one of the Asian study groups, you'll be much better served, um, you know, because those are kids that are there for one single purpose, to make very good grades and to graduate, generally graduate with honors. And if there's anyone that you want to study with, study with them. The kids who are going someplace, forget about the cool kids, forget about the kids who party, uh, who have a good reputation, the chances are they may not even finish school. Uh, you can always um, you know, treat yourself on the weekends and go party a little bit, but you're really there for academics and not there to uh, have a good time. There's a way you can find them with them balanced. Of course, you and I did it, so we know other kids can do it. But now it's, it's much more than just graduating, because companies want you to graduate with honors or with, or with high GPA. All these things are becoming important now. And as the economy becomes more global, you're not just competing against people here domestically, you're competing internationally now. So you have to be not only uh, educated or knowledgeable, you have to be very good at what you do. So it's not even good enough to even just come out of school and just be good or, or average. 
you need to be excellent at what you do because the job market for a very well-paid job is becoming that much more competitive. So excellence um, in everything that you do, is start with it. With the academics, should be the place in your home <coughs> life. Um, parents should demand that you keep your room up. Don't, don't allow your kids to have just a junky room and for them to be lazy. If you want to clean up, give it the best that you can do. Don't allow your kids to do a half-assed job and just say, yeah, well, at least they did something. Well, just doing something is not good enough anymore. Um, they're going to go into a job market where just doing something will give you average results. Average results generally keep you at the low end of the, uh, of the scale. If you want your children to be extremely successful in life, they need to be really good at what they do. They need to be very disciplined at what they do. And they can start with just how they make their bed up. They put enough effort in and do a very, very good job with the simple things, they can use that same discipline and apply it to other more complex things. No, I think that's uh, that's great advice. I have a couple of things I'd like to put out there, and this is for kids who are transitioning into high school. <clears throat> I think uh, first and foremost, I think you need to make sure that you're talking to your children. I think now that we live in a uh, day and age where most kids are connected more to technology mm -hmm. than they are to people and their, their peers, or they're connected to their peers, uh, even their parents in some cases, through a, a phone or, or through a, a desktop or something of that nature that you need to yank your kids away from using uh, technology all the time and make sure that, that they have strong communication skills because yeah. a lot of kids, you know, I'm finding out they have very good technical skills, but they have extremely poor communication skills because they've got to poor skills. Before. Exactly, they, they do not know how to communicate effectively. We have an extremely high rate of depression, suicide, some of which actually comes from the technology that oh, yeah. they are addicted to, addicted to as much of a drug. I mean, some of the thing, clinical studies have shown that, you know, kids' use of technology um, actually stimulates dopamines. And it's kind of like you're getting a high, almost like a drug. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, you have kids who have become addicted to technology and they use it as a security blanket. And so one thing that I would highly recommend is that you've got to get kids away from using technology all of the time, 24 hours a day, and make sure that you're talking with them, you're interfacing with them, you understand what's going on in their life. But how is that <clears> possible, <throat> Tom, when on social media, most people have all these contacts, your people that you communicate with, more so than in person, you communicate with them through through social media, so your your personal skills and interpersonal skills are lacking, but your typing skills are superb. Well, you're right, but ultimately you're the parent, they're the child. You're ultimately responsible for shaping their future, so it's really your decision, not their decision, and that's where the parenting part comes in. Ultimately. You brought this child into the world. You're responsible for them until they become an adult. So you have to require them, just like you require them to clean up their room. Mm -hmm. You require them to make good grades. You need to require them to set aside that phone, spend family time. You have a lot of families now. They don't eat together as a family like we did when we were playing. Everybody family. spread out. Ex the TV exactly. Yeah. You need to turn the TV off. You need to put the phone down. And when you're at the dinner table, the dining room table is not even being <coughs> used. Everybody is spread out every place. Exactly. Yeah. So that's something that parents have to enforce. This is a part of not being a friend to your child, but being a parent of your child and shaping them for their future because the reality of it is, you know, 10, 20 years down the line, it's too late to correct that type of behavior. That's true. So, I mean, ultimately, they said it's uh, much easier to uh, raise a child properly than it is to repair a broken adult. Oh, and I know that for certain. I have a, a very knucklehead son, and I'm really trying to get on the right track. And you're right, the ones who say become young adults is much more difficult. Uh, to do that than it is when they're, they're young. So it uh, looks like we're, we're almost out of time, Tom. Um, let's give a, a, a shout out to our sponsors real quick, uh, to uh, Fitness 360 for allowing us to uh, come into the building and uh, shoot our show. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, MOTC Telecom for uh, sponsoring our program. And to uh, Forest Film um, for doing the edits and uh, doing our uploads. And uh, of course our viewers. Just and like our viewers. Can't forget about our viewers. So please subscribe to our show. Encourage others to uh, subscribe. We uh, uh, could use the numbers. And then if you have any suggestions or comments, uh, please leave comments. We, we promise that we respond to every comment. And if you have uh, talking uh, topics for the show, you know, please uh, reach out to myself or Tommy and, uh, and we'll uh, give us some discussion. All right, thank you very much. That's yeah, all. Thank folks. you very much.